It's a new year, and on the very first day, I made my annual Old Ale, and I did it using a reiterated mash on the Anvil Foundry. And that all starts now. Welcome to Big Monster Brewing, the Anvil Foundry Edition. I am Matt, and in this episode, I will be making my annual Old Ale. But before we get into all that, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, liking the video, sharing it, and probably most importantly, commenting if you have any questions or comments, because the interaction that I've been having on this channel since turning to this Anvil Foundry focus has probably been the best part of posting these. So... If you have anything to say, please do below in the comments. So in English Old Ale, it is another one of my favorite styles to both make and drink. And it's a style that's kind of taught me some patience over the years, both in trying to dial in the recipe uh, for whatever system I'm brewing on and waiting to kind of pass judgment on how the results are as this pretty complex beer ages to get to its peak. I have kind of given up on some recipes by tasting them way too early, and that's just the wrong way to approach this type of beer. Now, the challenge this time around is going to be using the Anvil Foundry. The biggest thing is that I want it to be a pretty substantial ABV. Now, while the BJCP style guidelines do list the ABV range for this style from 5.5% to 9%, I, I could skirt that lower end and technically be in style, but for both the taste profile, the aroma, and the mouthfeel, really all the things that get scored on in, in when the beer is judged in competition, I want it to be in that higher range. I want it to be somewhere between seven and a half and eight. And along with that, I like to make my old ales entirely grain. I don't like using corn sugar or dry malt extract to boost up that ABV. Nothing wrong with doing that. It's a perfectly legitimate way to do it. But I kind of like to challenge myself to do it with just grains and a couple sugar adjuncts that we will talk about as well, but mostly grains. Where that comes in as a challenge with a foundry is the more grains I add to a single mesh in the foundry, the lower my efficiency drops. So to adjust for that, I would have to add more grains. And of course, as that number goes up, the efficiency number comes down. I'm going to try to combat that this time by splitting the grist into just about two equal portions and doing a reiterated mash. Now, a reiterated mash is when you do a mash as normal with a portion of your grist, then remove the spent grains, possibly do a sparge, depending on how you want to approach the process, then mash in your second set of grains in that sweet wort you've already collected. You're not gonna do a second mash in clean water. You're going to mash with the existing sweet wort. Now, if that description isn't clear, just hang in there because I did film the entire process this time. So I will have a visual demonstration of what I'm talking about. But to even get to that, we do need a grist to mash in and that comes from the recipe. And this recipe starts off with 60% pale malt. Now that is obviously over half of my grist. So I take four and a half pounds of just pale malt and set that aside. That is going to be the second mash in this reiterated mash. I also add 25% Maris Otter to this base malt. Then I start getting together the specialty malts with 5% Crystal 40, then add 2% of Crystal 120, and then finally 1% of chocolate malt. And that takes care of 96% of the fermentable sugars in this beer. The last 4% are going to come in the boil. So we'll talk about that when we get our boil additions ready. One last note on the grains just for this video. I did measure all these out with the intention of brewing on New Year's Day, which I did. But I didn't know at the time that I would be in the condition to do such a complex beer brewing on New Year's Day. So as a precaution, I bagged everything up in case I needed to come back to this project a week later. I'm mashing with the Anvil Foundry and boiling with propane for this beer. And to get it all started, I set the strike temperature for 154 degrees. When that temperature hits, I mash in the first half of this entire grist. I set up the recirculation and recirculate the mash for 50 minutes, stirring about every 15 minutes or so. I heat 
heated up the first gallon of sparge water for this first half of the mash, and I didn't want this sparge water to affect the work temperature because I still have a second mash to do. So I heated it up just above 154 degrees, knowing that sparging and letting it sit outside a bit would cool it down to around 154 and keeping that mash temperature where I want it when I get to that second mash. As usual, I lifted the basket out of the foundry, sparged, and this time while I waited for the last of the sweet wort to drop out, I went and milled the second half of the grist, the four and a half pounds of pale malt. I took a gravity reading to see where the wort was, and after this first mash, it was at 1.012. The anvil looks a little full at this point, and I still have that second mash to do, so to make sure I don't have a big spillover, I drain about a half gallon out of the foundry to save and add back when I start collecting my final volume of sweet wort. The last thing to do was to empty and rinse out the malt pipe, put it back in the foundry, and mash in the second half of the grist. I kept this at 154 degrees again for another 50 minutes, circulating the entire time and stopping again about every 15 minutes to stir the mash. Now while this second mash was converting, I get my boil additions together. This is a malt forward beer, so the hops are pretty small and simple, starting with 36 IBUs of Magnum at 60 minutes. Then a combination of two IBUs of Fugles and two IBUs of Alamit at 10 minutes. When I make this particular beer, I like to get the hops out of the boil right at flame out, so I put these boil additions into muslin sacks so I can fish them out at the end of the boil. I still have that last 4% of fermentables to add in this recipe, and that is coming in now in the boil additions. That last 4% is made up from four ounces of dark brown sugar going in at 10 minutes, along with two ounces of black treacle also going in at 10 minutes. And then I have my usual boil additions of yeast nutrients also at 10 minutes, and Werflock in the last two minutes. <laughs> this second mash, I raise the temperature to 168 degrees and do a 10 minute mash out. After that, I prepare another gallon of water at 170 degrees. I lift the malt pipe out of the foundry and sparge with just a quart of that 170 degree water to start with. I check the volume to make sure I'm not going to have too much sweet wort before the boil. Everything looks on pace, so I finish the sparge with the rest of that one gallon of 170 degree water. And after that's done, I transfer everything in the anvil foundry into my 10 gallon boil kettle. From there, I get it onto the propane burner and light the fire. At this point, I take a pre-boil gravity reading and it comes out to 1.049, which is four points short of my target of 1.053. So I'd extend my original 90 minute boil an extra 15 minutes to see if we can make up for those lost four points. <laughs> After the first 15 minutes of that rigorous boil, I recheck the pre-boil gravity. I do cool it off first to make sure I get an accurate reading, and we are at that 1.053 target. I chilled the wort down below 90 degrees before I transferred it into a three gallon carboy. Then I set the fermentation temperature for 61 degrees. When that hit temperature, I pitched a strong starter of Y yeast 1007 German ale yeast I prepared a couple nights before. And 24 hours later, the fermentation took off. I let it ferment out for the next two weeks before I transfer it to a keg. And then I'm gonna let that keg sit for another 10 days to two weeks before I carbonate it with the Blickman Quick Carb. From there, I'm going to bottle it and then it's gonna go in the back of my beer fridge and not do anything for the next six months. So in other words, the beer I just brewed isn't ready yet, but that's not gonna stop this episode's tasting segment.
So we're at tasting time, and like I just said seconds ago, the beer we brewed in this video isn't ready yet, but this one is. And what this is, is the first old ale that I brewed on the Anvil Foundry. Now I'm going to do a tasting on this and talk about it, and that's because this beer is the exact same recipe we just brewed, just with a different process. This beer was done with a single infusion mash, and obviously the one we just did was done with a reiterated mash. So I'm going to talk about what I expect the beer we brewed to bring that this will lack, and now probably do a video either just on that beer alone or maybe a follow-up on some other beers, because I think after going through this whole process, it's certainly worth seeing if the change did anything or, in, or even did what I wanted it to do or vice versa. So let's get to that tasting. Whoop. We almost got to knocking that beer off the partition here, but let's give it an open, give it a little hiss. It's not a terribly carbonated beer from what I remember. It's been probably close to a year since I tried one of these. So, okay, there is a little head on there. And the first thing I can see with, uh, again, camera not doing the same, uh, what would you say, uh, giving the same image that I'm seeing with my eyes. It's a little lighter than I like my old L's. It's definitely in the range, and I think it's probably an SRM that if a judge were to be judging this would be correct. Now let's get to the aroma. The aroma has mild elements of what I want. It has the dark fruit, a little bit of raisin, a little bit of plum, kind of that sweet alcohol. There's an alcohol presence without it being kind of a, a burning on my uh, senses. But all of it is just a little light, which has always been a problem with this particular batch of beer. So let me give it a taste, and I'm going to get into what I think the differences will be in the end. I can taste the alcohol more than I, than I, than I can smell it. Um, again, all those flavors that I want, a little bit of raisin, a little bit of plum, some very strong, dark, almost burnt sugars and caramels in that, which is actually really good. It's all there. It's just a little soft, a little mute, a muted, I guess is a way to say it. Um, but it's, you can identify it all just when you have an old ale poured for you though, you just want more of that. And I think that is where doing this again with that reiterate, reiterated mash is going to help because I did draw a lot more of the fermentable sugars out of the grist than I did for this one. The final gravity, I believe I have to double check here. The final gravity for the one we did today was 1.074, which is four points below my target, but that is 10 points, if not more, it's at least 10 points more than this is. And doesn't sound like a lot when you're talking from 60 to 70 by comparison, but when you start getting down to your final gravity numbers, those 10 points play a huge difference. And I think doing it this way, drawing more fermentable sugars, drawing more out of the mash is really what it comes down to, I think is going to give this second beer, the same version of this, a little fuller body, a little more heaviness, uh, in a good way, and I just think it's going to ramp up those flavors just enough to not get to that cloyingly sweet, not get to anything even unpleasant. Just take what is already a good beer. Uh, uh, what do I want to say? Process-wise, there's nothing wrong with this, and it tastes good. It just doesn't – it's not great. I think it could be just a few points more, and – this is a brew I've done and won a gold medal on, or recipe, I should say, in one gallon form, and then again on my old system. I want to be able to maybe winning, I mean, medals are subjective, but I, I know this is not the one, the flavor that won the medal, and I want to achieve that flavor profile again, and I want to get that dialed in with the Anvil Foundry, and I think this gets me closer, hopefully it gets me there, and we'll find out in a few months. But again, not a bad beer. Just, just, I want this more. In fact, I think if I were able to, I guess I'm able to, although you burn off the alcohol. I was going to say, if I was able to boil this down and reduce it, I'd probably get the flavors I want, but I would burn off the alcohol. What's really the point in doing that? But let me just take one more sip to wrap up here. So I'm really looking forward to what this version is going to be next to this. And I still have a couple bottles of this left. So I might even do a, side-by-side -side comparison and see what the difference is when the time comes. 
But until then, it's just a, a waiting game, and we have some more brewing to do because the competition season here in Central Florida is actually happening, and that is what my focus is going to turn on, and I'm going to keep recording as I do. Maybe my presentation will change a little bit as we go. We'll see, but there's definitely more to come, more styles. In fact, a two brews from now, I'm trying out learning styles again. There's a style I want to learn, and if I can dial it in, I want to submit it for competition to see how close I am to other experienced and educated palettes. So that's coming up soon. I, of course, have to say thank you for watching. I'll be back with everything I talked about and maybe more. I don't know. We'll see. I've been enjoying what I'm doing so far and really don't plan to stop doing it because it means I'm brewing beer and eventually I'm drinking beer. And that just really is a win-win for me in any way you look at it. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in that next episode.